Hey everybody, it's Kevin from JJ Hat Center. Today we're going to talk about your first hat. Um, there's got to be some people out there who are, you know, maybe thinking about getting a first hat, so they, you know, did a little research and they put me on. So, you know, there's definitely all sorts of amazing hats you could buy, but there's certain hats I think are going to be sort of a safer purchase um, that are reliable, they're not going to screw up in the rain, lose their shape easily, and they're they're easy to wear, they're accessible for lots of people, it's not the kind of hat that you're going to put on and feel uncomfortable like it's a costume. I need to express that there are certain hats that are going to be more dramatic on people, you know, like big huge flat brims, you know, with like sparkle bands and stuff. And then there's other hats that are going to be a little bit more laid back, it's probably going to get you a little bit more wear time. Um, you know, for instance, like my green hat with the, that I always wear, like in my uh, icon and everything. I don't wear that Kelly green hat when I'm going out to, you know, like empty the trash or, you know, go to the post office or something. I wear it at work, you know. So I have other stuff that I wear at home, like cotton buckets and things that can get wet and things I can wash and all kinds of, like, you know, crappy hats and stuff. I said crap in my intro. That's bad. All right. Anyway, name of this video is going to be what's a good first hat for me all right so i'm going to sing a little song uh, it's a song called hands on the wheel and uh, it seemed a little bit um i don't know timely maybe it's an old song but uh, i thought it seemed a little bit like uh, appropriate for these crazy times that we're living in now so do a little guitar intro, then we're gonna get into a very nice hat lecture. Let me turn up the sound. At a time when the world seems to be spinning hopelessly out of control. There's deceivers and believers And all the in-between us That seem to have a new place to go It's the same old song It's right and it's wrong it's just something I do There's no place to hide I look in your eyes And I find myself in I look to the stars, tried all of the bars, and I'm nearly gone up in smoke. Now my hands on the wheel of something that's real. In the shade of an oak Down by the river Sits an old man and his boy Set and set, spinning tails And fishing for whales With a lady that people enjoy. It's a sing and tune. The man on the moon. It's the way that I feel about me. And with me, please, to have. 
I'm looking here and I found myself in you. I looked to the stars, tried all of the bars, and I nearly got up in smoke. Now my hands on the wheel of something that's real, and I feel like I'm going. myself like a, a good A minus for that one. That was not bad. I know I could do a little better, but it was good. It was alright. That was the first time I sang that song too. I like to be spontaneous with these videos. I don't like to plan stuff out. So sometimes I'll play the song, you know, I'll play like a YouTube version, I'll listen to it, but I, I never tend to practice these songs. Um, call me crazy, but I, I like to be spontaneous. I feel like it gives uh, for a better YouTube uh, experience. If stuff is not as slick and edited, I don't know. I like to watch that. I figure you guys like to watch it. All right, what's a good first hat for you guys? Um, a good first hat is a something that's not going to be high maintenance, something that will not screw up in the rain. All right, now fur felt hats are definitely more stable and more long lasting than wool felt hats. They also cost twice as much. Now, I'm assuming if you're in the $200 range, you can afford this stuff. If not, you're in the $100 range or so, and you want to go for something called light felt, L-I-T-E felt. It's a patented type of felt. It's a kind of a felt. It's almost like buying a, a pair of uh, whatever shoes with Vibram sh soles on it. The Vibram is like the patented thing that's on the sole, but it's not the company that makes the hat, you know? So anyway, if you buy a hat made of light felt, on the inside of the crown, the inside of it, it's going to say light felt with a, you know, a trademark and stuff. It's got to say those words. It's generally made in the USA, and they're crushable, rollable. These hats, you could take them, put them in your pocket, and when you get to a restaurant, you get to an airplane, you're commuting, the train, whatever, you could just, really, you could do it. You could put them in your pocket, they pop right back to shape. They're not going to last you 30, 40 years or more like a fur felt hat, but they'll last you. Um, you'll, you'll have it for, you know, 20, 25 years and stuff, you know, which is pretty good. Um, not everybody, but if you take care of it. You know, the biggest thing with wool felt is when they get wet, you have to dry it in a area that's not got, that doesn't have blasting heat. Because every time you dry a wet hat in heat, it's shrinking like a half a millimeter. You don't notice it. It gets a little tighter. You stretch it on your head, you pull it, and then it it starts to fit you. It's like you're doing something like this. So what happens is there's less mass in the hat every year. It's a little less felt, and you're stretching it out. So the hat just winds up out of shape. It doesn't have like enough felt left to give you a good shape, and it looks like an old vagrant's hat. That's what happens to wool felt hats when they get very, very uh, old and stuff. But you can get a couple of good decades out of them if you take care of them. Just dry them in an area where your heat is not blasting. If you've got one room in your house where the radiator's turned off, that's where you store your guitars or your expensive whatever. You don't want the heat to damage it. That's where you keep your hats. Um, the heat is off in my bedroom. Um, generally, the walls are just hot enough in the winter without the heat on. The rest of the house you know, is blasting heat. So I keep the heat in this room lower so my guitars don't get dehydrated and you know, basically destroyed. It's the same thing for your hats. Leather sweatbands will dehydrate wool hats will shrink. So you know, let's get back to the fur felt stuff. Fur felt hats are going to last you longer because there's new, there's just no wool content in there. They take the wool completely out of the, uh, you know, the equation and it's made out of fur. Animal fur that's got a natural water repellency. They add other things to help it be more, you know, like an Akubra. Um, think of a hat called the Akubra Style Master. Uh, I probably sold dozens of them on this station because I love the hat. Um, it's just a hat that you could get dumped on water, rain, snow, piled up. 
I've seen tons of people with a Kubras with snow on them. They send me pictures of it. Um, this is a hat that with a felt is so good for $175. The leather inside, every single bit of the hat is top, top shelf. It pretty much can't be any better. Uh, if they charge $300, I would say it's worth it. If they charge $400, I'd say it's worth it. They charge $175. And that's the same price it was for like 10, 15 years ago. So they haven't gone up at all. Akubra, A-K-U-B-R-A. We sell something called the Bushman. We sell another hat called the Traveler that rolls up. And then we sell the Style Master. Each hat comes in two colors, like a gray and a sort of a beige color. Uh, the Style Master comes in kind of a blue-gray hat in our color. It's kind of like a slate, like a slate gray, which is, you know, like bluish gray sort of charcoal great color. I'm going to say the Style Master is a fantastic first hat. It's going to be a good brim. It's going to give you either the uh, dress hat look or the outdoorsy look or the you know the casual look like I'm doing. Whatever you want to do, it, it will be that versatile. Um, I love guitars that are versatile, which is why I always buy these uh, Reverend guitars. This model is called the Flat Rock and it has these sort of Gretsch style pickups called the Filter Tron. So it's different than like a Les Paul or a Stratocaster or a Telecaster, which are like the three main, you know, most popular guitars in the world. They are different. What it does is it gives me twangy tones like a Telecaster country music. I could go. But if I want to, you know, have a thick and juicy tone like for jazz. It's versatile. Um, these Akubras are versatile. That's what I think. Not only are they super, super quality, they're completely versatile. You could wear it like from the most, you know, outdoorsy, western, casual thing to the most like trendy, urban, cool thing to completely dressy with a business suit and a tailored overcoat. And, you know, it goes every direction and it does it like a champ. So versatility, quality. I'm going to say almost anything by a Kubra is good. I would go with them. Um, you could find a few models here at jjhatcenter.com. Um, and uh, you probably should get a few more models, you know, to make a lot of stuff. And they're all reliable, every single one. Now let's get to Stetson. Stetson is definitely the most requested company in the U.S. Everybody loves them, and uh, rightly so. They've got a long history of making very good hats. Um, their Western hats, I'm going to say like 99% of them are tough as nails and they'll probably last you near a lifetime or longer. We get guys with their father's hats, grandfather's hats, um, hats from the 30s and 40s we see that are you know still in very good condition um, because they're such good quality and they're very, very durable. Now a Western hat is going to be very heavy, it's going to be very hard and stiff, and there's a long breaking process. You're going to have to wear it for you know a bunch, kind of like Western boots. There's a little breaking process, but when you do break it in, it lasts you forever. Um, not every Western is tall, has a big you know side like this. Some of them are very mellow, and they're almost like you know something you could wear to work with an overcoat. There are small Westerns, real low crown Westerns, things that are barely like. They don't have a costume-like look, like, you know, they don't look like something that you're going to wear to go, like, barrel racing or something, you know. They're more of a Western with a low crown, a shorter brim, uh, that you could wear every day to work. And if you're in New York, people aren't going to say, hey, buddy, where's your horse? Which is just like, everybody says that. Um, where's your horse? So, um, thus, I don't wear Western hats in New York. So, um... Besides, I don't think I really look good in Western hats. I'm kind of like this little short, skinny, pipsqueak dude, you know, from Long Island. And I just feel like I don't belong in one or something. Um, I don't feel comfortable in one. I feel like I'm dressing up and playing cowboy or something. It's just not me. But um, Western crossover is cool. You know, I have a flat hat with a kind of a flat Stevie Ray Vaughan type of a look hat called the uh, Tri-City from Stetson. I have a black Tri-City. Um, all sorts of things that are like, uh, I have one called the Boss Raw, which is almost like a Tom Mix. It's like a huge, like a, a black one with a uh, kind of a pencil curl, sort of like a huge gambler with a big Tom um, Boss Raw. I have a couple of things. I don't really wear them much though. Um, 
I'm more of a light. I like stuff that's lightweight and soft um, and flexible and crushable. That's just me. Um, but Western hats are definitely cool. I would suggest as a first hat, um, check out something like a Stetson Dune, D-U-N-E. It's in the, um, what's the name of the collection again? The Gun Club collection, which is kind of like their crossover outback type of stuff. It's a uh, rugged felt, but it's not a high, high crown. It's a low crown. It's not a huge, huge brim that rolls up on the sides. It's a kind of a downturn brim that's, you know, big but not huge. Uh, the Dune is a fantastic first hat, I'm going to say. It'll also take rain like a champ. Um, you know, you don't want to, like, be out there in a, in a deluge for, like, three hours. Um, if you are, you got to make sure your hat is set the right way when it dries. Um, keep it away from heat and invert your hat upside down. That's the best thing. Um, you can hang it, too. I prefer upside down, away from heat, room temperature. Crack a window if you don't have any place like that. Crack a window in the bathroom, in the kitchen, close the door so the house doesn't get cold. Let your hat dry in there or something, you know, in the, the bathroom with a little breeze. If you dry it with heat, you're slowly shrinking the leather. It's going to start getting tight. Now, here's another thing. If you don't wear your hat for years, if it stays in storage, it shrinks. The leather inside shrinks. It dehydrates. It could be fixed, but you know, there are side effects to stretching hats. I don't like to stretch hats. Um, all right, let's get back to Stetson. Another good first hat for Stetson, uh, not Western hats, like a Stetson dress hat would be, my favorite is a Stetson Whippet. It has a teardrop crown. Um, teardrop is a more sort of a gangstery, uh, I don't know, it slopes down towards the back, has a cool sort of a film noir, 1940s, you know, honey, I'm home, like, you know, just like Mr. Everyman in, in the city of uh, New York or whatever in, like, the 40s. It looks just like a classic old hat. The Whippet is a great hat. It's got a low crown, so anybody who's afraid of this height, it's much, much lower. It's, like, down there. It's got a bigger brim than mine. It's a pretty much a, uh, a standard, like, two and a half, two and three-eighths inch brim. It has binding on the edge, which is great because it gives it strength keeps it from getting a little floppy, and um, they're about $210. They've been stable at that price for like a long time. Uh, Stetson Whippet, my very first hat was that in gray. Actually, I think it was a Biltmore Whippet in the 90s, but uh, it might have been a Biltmore Whippet. But it was the same hat. It was a Whippet, you know, exact same style. I think it was made by Biltmore, actually, in the first one. Yeah, we used to carry Biltmore Whippets back in the 90s. Another good first hat for you, we talked about light felt hats, they're crushable and stuff. Um, I think light felts are very good first hats. My opinion is, even if you have something like this in your collection, let's say you have a 200, 300, 400, whatever dollar fedora in your collection, and today it's just a blizzard out. There's just like horrible rain and like icy snow and you know freezing rain and sleet and slush all over and cars are splashing you with their rain. It's just a mess. It's just terrible out. Uh, the only thing you could wear basically is just like you know something that you know is going to get messed up. You're not going to want to wear that hat. It's good to have a light felt in your collection despite your price range, despite your collection. When it's really nasty out, I want to put on my hat that is not expensive. I know it's going to like live through the rainstorm without getting messed up. Something that's low maintenance. Um, a crushable light felt is like that. They don't lose their shape. They don't pretty much do anything. They stay okay. They're very stable. Um, they don't give you as much longevity as a good fur felt hat, but sometimes, sometimes they do. It depends on the fur felt hat. Not every fur felt is great. Some of them are very temperamental, high maintenance, and hard to take care of. That they just get so screwed up and out of shape um, that you'd rather have the cheap light felt out there because it's just so much more durable and unusable. So don't joke at it because it's made out of the wool. Don't joke. You know, that it's like, oh, it's not a real hat, it's not like serious or authentic. Light felt hats are going to be like your workhorses, you know. You go out there and you just get just horrible rain and you can roll them, all this stuff. Um, 
I feel like they have a purpose in your collection. Um, things like rain hats, like you could get a rain hat made out of like a poplin, which is kind of like that rain coat material. So it's not a hot, like a summer hat. It's not a warm winter hat. It's just a hat that keeps you dry all year round. Um, these are good. Something like that, you know, you don't care if you crunch it up or whatever. A rain hat is like $75 in New York. I'm sure you could find cheaper ones too, like one that's not made in USA. A Chinese one will probably be $20, $30. Good rain hats are great. When it's horrible out, when it's raining, I'd rather you wear your $20 to $75 rain hat than wear your $500 Italian, you know, dress hat. Or, you know, okay, uh, a Stetson Western is going to be good in the rain and snow, but not all of them. You know, um, open roads and stuff that have been bought in the last five years, they're a little thinner and things like that. Um, I'm going to say that, yeah, they're, they're, Western hats are super rugged, but not every single one are going to hold their shape like a champ in the rain. Um, certain hats have more fedora-like qualities, like an open road. They have a flange, which is very hard to preserve the curve unless you put in some work. When your hat is wet, make sure that the flange is flipped up off the table. Put it upside down and straighten it out a little. Make sure it's not going to dry, you know, like this, you know. That's, you don't want that. It dries any way you leave, there'll be no surprises. That's all you do. Light felt hats are great for hats. The Whippet, I've talked about that. I think it's incredible. Anything by a Kubro, fantastic. I'm going to say the Stetson Saxon is a hat I've been talking about a lot this week. It's a two inch brim, kind of a hat like I'm wearing now. It's a little bit shorter, like a medium. Um, I'm going to say it's not a big brim, it's not a tiny brim, it's a good medium sized brim, kind of like everybody's dad wore. It's like the, well, this is oversized. Hold on, let me show you. This is a two inch brim, closer to my size, so the brim looks a little shorter now. Yeah. Alright, this is what everybody's dad wore. Maybe the crowns were lower, because mine's Italian now. But, uh, you know, it's like the old dad hat, the old man feeding pigeons in the park and stuff. The short brim hat that snaps, you know, with the feather in the side. That's the dad hat. The Stetson Saxon is that. It's pretty much the cool, like, authentic hat. Um, when you see, you know, older fellas hats from, you know, the old days, guys who really, really wore hats like this, most of them are two inch brims and stuff like this. The two and a half inch brims like, you know, Stetson Temples and Whippets, they're less popular. That's a young man's hat and stuff, you know. They're, like an old man will come in, they'll look at a Whippet or a Temple or something with a two and three inch brim. They'll be like, uh, that's a cowboy hat. I don't need that big brim. And yeah, that's a cowboy hat, you know. They look at it like it's just huge. Like that's for young, flashy guys. A short, neat brim like a two inch is, that's a dress hat. Um, I suggest it. A Stetson Saxon, to me, has way more sort of authenticity than a bigger brim. But a lot of it has to do with your build, your face, uh, your shoulders, how fat your face is, and how it balances out. So a guy this size will look different than a guy that size with a head that size, you know what I mean? Somebody who's huge in a build, big fat face, tall, it's all relative. Stetson Saxon on them is going to look so tiny where it looks kind of bigger on me, a medium brim, because I have a slimmer face, I'm a little shorter guy and stuff, so it's relative. Um, but I'm going to say two inch brim, yeah, it's more popular as far as like if you look at like the last 50 years, like what, you know, what were these older fellas or hat wearing fellas really wearing, you know, what was dad's hat like, what was grandpa's hat like, more two inch brims, not too many two and a halves, there were some, Archie Bunker wore one, right, he had a big brim, but uh, that was a young man's look, you know, Archie was not an old, old guy, he was, uh, you know, whatever. I'm going to say he was kind of middle-aged, all right, Archie Bunker. Why are we talking about Archie Bunker? Right? It was a clunker. Shouldn't have hit that now. All right, guys. I'm going to go play with my son. He just uh, finished school yesterday, so I want to go get him something special, some junk food or, I don't know, something, a special lunch or something. So uh, he finished uh, school and also remote school this year, so... 
Nice. Congratulations, Sid. <laughs> Cause you know that cat 